Broadcast Network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after-show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Ooh. <laughs> Look at this. Just like on your favorite soap operas, we've done a recast here on the GH Report. No. That's right. He J may or may not be back from That's the right. James Lott Jr. has been recast. <laughs> Bye, James. <laughs> No, no worries here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the GH Report here on After Buzz TV. Mm -hmm. I am uh, just a substitute host because we can never fill in. No, we could ever replace James Lott Jr. Not ever. No, that's right. So you don't have to worry about going to Soap Opera Digest, checking out the comings and goings. James Lott Jr. will be back here next week. He's just off out and about doing a little recon, mm -hmm. for getting us the latest inside scoop for General <laughs> Hospital. I'm going to be uh, leading the show here this week, uh, Frank Moran. But I couldn't be doing this alone, of course. Oh. Yes. I'm <laughs> The two ladies next to me here are going to be making sure that this show is better than ever. So, all the way over to the far left. Hi, guys. My name is Ladeen Harvey. You can follow me on Twitter at Ladeen Harvey. Ladeen underscore Harvey, I'm sorry. And I'm, of course, Lucretia Lyon. Yes, like on Empire. And it's spelled <laughs> just like that show. It's L A C R E T I N and L Y O N. Mm hmm. <laughs> 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 now, folks, make sure you hop in the live chat here. Uh, you can. You, you know, send out your thoughts and uh, feedback and opinions about this week's happenings in Port Charles. So we're, uh, we're going to get right into it. A lot of major storylines happening this week. It's the mm -hmm. second week of the new writers. So already, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the second week, so it kind of, you know, settling in. I know you, you guys were, you ladies were enthusiastic about the new writing mm -hmm. last week. Felt like it was yeah. accelerated. Things were happening. Do you still feel that way the, sa the second weekend? Um, I actually feel like this week it wasn't as... Exciting as the first week, I feel like uh, this week that just happened was a, just a little bit boring for me. I was kind of like, okay, can we get on to something else? Uh, it was okay this week. I have to say, I liked this week, but I do agree it was a little slower than last week, and that's not what we'd had, but they did sort of fix a lot of the issues we've been saying. Like, Nina, you know, I was really impressed with her story, you know, and giving her, like, you know, she'd only been with Silas, and kind of gave her a little bit of, a, uh, you know, sympathy from the audience that probably wasn't there before. Okay. All right, so what were you guys, since we're talking about Nina, I guess we'll kick yeah. off one of the storylines here. It was uh, Franco, Nina, and Kiki. I mean, first we'll kick it off where, with, with Kiki at the beginning of the week, sitting there, there in the floating rib there, uh, throwing <laughs> some alcohol right into her mom's <laughs> right. face. Disrespectful. Right. And I don't mm. like it. I f at first, I thought they were getting ready to put her on a nice, mm. you know, a nice path, you know, with tricking us to think that they're going to resolve their problems, and then they turn her right back into. I wonder what they were thinking if that was a good place to take her, or no, we're not going to make her the good person. I was hoping that they was going to uh, flatten her out a little bit. Well, I loved it. I mean, even though I love Ava, I just was like, I mean, I'm sorry if that was your mother. Wouldn't you do the same thing? She slept with your boyfriend. She lied to you for months. I was just glad that, you know, finally Kiki's speaking up for herself and getting mad and, you know, <laughs> taking the character into a more interesting direction than she'd been before. Well, I like that it starts off first with Ava just t talking to Morgan right there in the bar. And Morgan, first thing, lays into her like, you wanted this baby so <laughs> bad, and now you're hanging out at a bar? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Like, all right, relax, Morgan. I mean, just because you have a child doesn't mean that you can't have some sort of life as well. No. I mean, I, I did say, like, at first, Morgan was his usual self, but I do agree when he took, you know, like, hey, you know what, let's help Kiki more so than anything. I was kind of impressed with the way Morgan turned that situation around into more of caring about, you know, someone rather than his usual, yeah, I'm hurt. Well, how do you feel they're playing it there w with Ava? Uh, do you feel like he's really trying to put some distance between them, or is it just he's just being scorned, he feels hurt, so that's why he's just lashing out all the time? Do you feel like they're going to revisit the Ava-Morgan romance a little bit later down the road? I hope not. That's I mean, I think say, it's I don't, played out. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think that they will. I think it's pretty, like you said, it's, it's played out. I don't even think that they should even be going there, quite honestly. But, you know, with soaps, they do whatever they want. <laughs> 
Ah, so, yeah. so would you rather see Morgan try to make his way back with Kiki? Yeah, I, th- I think she'll. I think she'll. Maybe that may be an element that can help calm her down a little bit. But it's probably going to take her a while because of, you know, she's been scarred of all the events that happened to her. So who knows if that would even work. That's a tough one to come back from, though. I mean, to always know, like, he slept with my mom. He slept with my mom. But I'm going to forget that. Or at least forgive it. Yeah, I I don't want them getting back together either. I think Kiki needs to be single for a while and figure herself out. You know, since we've known her on the show, she's been thrown back and forth, you know, with the brothers. And it's just kind of like, okay, give her something else. If she takes time to figure out herself, she might as well disappear off a general hospital. (laughs) That's pretty much because she she has nothing else. She has no other value on the show I don't think no that's true uh, uh, and I don't know I felt like the, her getting arrested just because she reached over yeah. and grabbed oh that class, I felt like that was a little bit of a reaction by everybody involved on that part oh yeah yeah and right. I think it was just to set up the Franco saving her and kind of developing that and that's why I think that you know maybe her not being in the relationship with Morgan but with the Franco and Nina situation is sort of giving her a purpose without throwing her between brothers again and it does yeah. seem to lead into the, the rumor that, be, uh, that is going around that possibly that she is really Nina's daughter. So it's a way right. to kind of start building those inroads for if they want to make that reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, I have mm-hmm. Jazz um, Morgan saying, uh, I'm, not a pr- I'm not impressed with Morgan or Kiki. I'm team <laughs> a- Ava on this one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Team Ava. I mean, what did Ava, but I mean, how can it be team Ava? I mean, she also. Yeah, I like love her and even I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jazz. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So now you also have uh, the the great revelation from Nina is that she did not sleep with Rick. That it was just you know that uh, Silas was her first and her only. Right. And so she's a little insecure about getting together with Franco because oh you know well maybe that's I'm not that great. That's why Silas kind of straight and hooked up with Ava. Oh get over it. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much is how I see it. Come on, girl. Well, I I actually well you have to say like Nina was in a coma for 20 years, so she's basically a 20 something. She's not a 40 something. So. (laughs) You do kind of feel bad, like, because you're like, oh, wait, she's an older woman, but she really is in this 20-something mindset because she's been in a coma for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you do kind of feel for her. And I thought that adding that element kind of made more sense to why she went crazy over Silas and, you know, really sort of explained some of her behavior without, like, whitewashing it. You're like, oh, okay. And I can understand why, uh, I mean, Rick Rick had Madeline at the time, so he was getting some Madeline. So he's like, he wasn't in any real rush to hook up with Nina. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, just to backtrack just a little bit, I saw that Daquan said something that I was thinking, but I didn't say. <laughs> um, he said, well, Frank, uh, Michael forgave Sonny to killing AJ, so it should be no problem for Kiki to forgive <laughs> Morgan. Oh, and I totally agree with you, Daquan. True. You've kind of set the bar, yeah. If you can forgive somebody, uh, one father for killing another right. father. I, uh, yeah. All right. I guess the, the bar's been set there. <laughs> I guess you, can, you have to be able to forgive your mom for sleeping with your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the general hospital forgiveness scale, I guess. That is very low, but, um, yeah. All right, so our other storyline, we are, well, we'll go on to uh, the, the nice long one. Uh, I remember James rolling this out last week. Lula, Lulu, Dante, Dylan, Valerie, Nathan, and Maxie. We're going to loop all, all those young couples in together on this one. Um, it's finally lovers. starting not to look so jumbled. It's like now the story is being ironed out. It's not so much confusion anymore. Like, you know, we had so many storylines going on between all those characters all at one time, and it was kind of just too much for me. But now I'm actually seeing where I think each of these people are going, and I like it. Well, and I like that the writing for them is you kind of like everyone in the Mm storyline now. Like, everybody's written to have a really good point of view, and you see their side and everything. And especially this week, I thought with Lulu and Nathan, they certainly had made them a little bit better than they had been in the past. The Lulu in the church scene, especially after when Nicholas came in, was really a turning point for the character for me. Like, made her a little bit more interesting and Mm -hmm. more like she used to be. Right, right. Although, I don't know. Guys, do do you know that Lulu really loves Dante? Do you know that? I don't know if you guys realize that Lulu really loves Dante. Yeah, and that was why that scene was so sweet, and that's why it's so heartbreaking that, uh, you know, this is obviously going to come down, and you're Mm -hmm. like, oh... There's certain things that she say yeah. within the scenes that she's so sure about her relationship, mm-hmm. and then it makes us as the viewers be like, Aww. "Sorry, boo." But uh, see, I was—I felt like it was just yeah. like laying it on too thick. Uh-huh. Like, all right, writer, she yeah. can dial it back. We right. get it. We, we get, get it. it. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we know. Oh, this yeah, is gonna nothing's suck. gonna come crashing down <laughs> on my relationship, and I'm uh, like, "Thank um, you, God." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a little much, but you're like, I mean, they're slavering on, so we can feel really bad for Lulu when it blows up. <laughs> 
Uh, like I think we're already feeling bad. We don't need yeah. you to keep keep hammering that home. We we get it. We get it. We get it. But I, I did like that scene between Lulu and, and Nicholas. I thought that was all right. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen them do a scene together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was very much Lulu had finally tapped into her Spencer that had been like vacant since Dylan had come back and they'd gone off. And yeah, but that scene where she gave him just as good, you know, I was like, whoa, this is Lulu. Where have you been? Yeah, I mean, I'd rather see a, a family still be able to disagree. And and you know just you know give each other what they uh, their opinion without it, it being an argumentative. They can still love each other. They can still realize that the base of it, their family, but they may not always agree with that other person. Right, right. Yeah, she's like, I'm on the side of the quartermains, but you are my brother, and I love you. It's like, yeah, they, you know, that's how family should be, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Amanda Pinnell saying, I'm mad they dropped that story. I wish they would have stayed with Victor. Um, and I have Jasmine Morgan saying I can't stand Nathan, Dante, or Lulu. <laughs> Valerie is okay. I love Maxine. I'm liking Dylan, so I'm hoping they hook up. I feel like the yeah. chemistry. Yeah, I feel like that chemistry there is is so good between Maxie and Dylan. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hope it doesn't go the ma- way of Maxie and Johnny, um, where you know they had such good chemistry, but they would never really hook them up because of Lulu. And I think that I'm afraid that they might wind up doing that with Dylan as well. So please don't. But I see like yeah. no way right now that the yeah. writer could even put that in the storyline, Maxie and Dylan together, because they haven't even like. They don't even look like they are supposed to be together. Yeah, I think it'll take some time. Or haven't time. shown any interest in one yeah. another or anything like that. So that's kind of hard to see from right now. Yeah. Now, certainly yeah. Valerie's dealing with a lot of uh, trust issues this week. It seems mm-hmm. like everybody she's confided yeah. in just keeps blabbing her secrets to everybody else. And she's not too thrilled about it. Right. Takes Nathan's donut, <laughs> just chucks it in the garbage. Yeah. I feel so sorry for Valerie in this whole pregnancy test thing and everyone coming after her. Like, she's yeah. really taking the heat. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, and it's like, okay, Val- Valerie did a bad thing, but she was not the married one. Mm-hmm. You know, give her a break, right. guys. You know, she she's owned it, and she's taking her licks. <laughs> that pregnancy I liked test. her, I liked I her like, this mm-hmm. week. And I, yeah. I like how they keep reinforcing, though, with uh, with Lulu, just as she's talking with Dante. Like, I can't believe I almost let our relationship blow for something as insignificant as a kiss. And I'm like, <laughs> we get it. Okay, we yeah. get it. All right, all right, Lulu. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we know what your bar set is. If it's, you know, the sex is going gonna, is gonna to be a, an issue. All right. Mm-hmm. And, but I did like the, the scene between Dylan and, and Dante, though, in the uh, the police, right, in the interrogation room. Just kind of yeah. letting each other know, like, hey, we, we, let's put all the cards on the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That they finally got that uh, that balloon aired out a little bit. Absolutely. But I wonder, I, I wonder how it's gonna come out. You know, that's the only thing that I'm like on edge about. Because if if he isn't gonna say anything, if Dylan and Dante isn't gonna say anything, it's gotta be that video. That video is out there, and some. But yeah, I, it'll I, be played at the worst possible right. moment. Yeah. Like you gotta, you, you the, when there's a party or something, <laughs> you know that that's when the video is gonna be played. Like a wedding, I don't know. It'll be on something. Right. Oh, that's true. There's probably gonna be yeah. some kind of you know release party or like a rap party, and they're like, oh, here's some footage from you know, the making of the movie, and then boom, that comes on. Which then they tell yeah. you, like, you know, like what, what kind oh of BTS guys? God. Like I'm gonna put this terrible secret on just for everybody yeah. to watch. <laughs> That's, that's it's like, okay. it's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the, uh, the, then there's also the scene between uh, Nathan and Maxie towards the end of the week there where mm-hmm. Maxie really wanted to know what Nathan's secret was. And, and I like that Nathan stood strong. Yeah, that was actually the turning point for his character as well. You know, he said you said to get him to the ER stat. <laughs> no, and the fact a, yeah. that he was a, you know, no, I'm sorry, I can't betray confidence. I was like, whoa, Nathan. I saw him as a job. loser for that. Really? <laughs> what? I surely did. No way. Bro, she came. She, no, 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 but she, like, spilled her little secret of what she was holding. Yeah. And then, you know, they're together. And she did that part. I was expecting him to meet her halfway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, my, my thought no. was, like, it's just... It, and I agree with Nathan that that was the secret that he had does not in- impact their lives at all. So it's like for her, him not to say anything, he's respecting somebody else's confidence, and it doesn't interfere with his or Maxie's relationship at all. No, he was a loser. Oh, <laughs> come on! No I have, way. No, I have to stand strong for that one. I was just like, mm. come on, man. Wait, so no secrets at all in a relationship? If somebody No had, secrets at all. Mm-hmm. No secrets? I don't believe in that. Even if the secret has nothing I to don't do believe, with you. I don't believe in that. They're keeping a friend's secret? Wow. You want to know You want to know everything your, your, your boo knows? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boo. <laughs> Fess up. I want to know it all. I don't believe in secrets in a relationship. All right. Yeah. If it's if yeah. it's that secretive, don't tell me at all. If yeah. it's if it's that serious, especially if you know that it doesn't affect me or we're not like so close, like brother sister close, don't tell me. Mm. 
Right, so yeah, so if you're not going to say anything, don't even try to allude because, to it. Like, because I've got something when I, I can't say tell you. when I say I'm not going to tell anyone, that doesn't include my best friend or my boyfriend because uh -huh. there's oh. no. But when you are talking about like a general audience, of course I'm not gonna tell anyone. But <laughs> well, well. so. All right, now do you tell your friends that when they say something to you, like, oh, you told me not to tell anybody, but I'm of course I'm gonna tell my best friend and my. my, my <laughs> you know that, right? You know that, right? No, it's just a disclaimer. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll change it. We'll go to uh, another topic here. Uh, Carly, Sonny, Michael, and Morgan. Oh. Oh, God. Like, I was going to vomit. Why do you hate them so much? <laughs> <laughs> because I have watched the show since I was born, and I have seen Sonny and Carly win after win. When exactly. other characters are more interesting and have not done the horrible things they've done, yet they're not touted as good. That's the problem with Sonny and Carly. If they just own the fact that they were a bunch of badasses, we'd all like them a little bit more. But then they're like, no, we're the good mobster. We're the good uh, old lady. I guess, what do you call I them? I think they pretend to be that way. Oh, uh, on the show, it's always like, oh, Sonny, he's he, he really just loves his kids. Oh, why do you blow one up? Why do you, <laughs> why do you get one shot in the head? I don't know. Like, that's my thing. It's oh, like, no. it's just vomit inducing that wedding. I'm like, oh my God. And this is like the fifth one. It's not that big a deal, guys. Well, I, I feel <laughs> like you're saying with Sonny because yeah. I feel like there's, they, He's become, even though he's no. necessarily he's a mobster, so he should be by inherently sort of a no. bad guy. But they, he's become such a fan favorite that they, they can't just really gloss it over. Yeah. yeah, they can't write him into prison and have him be, you know, convicted mm -hmm. of some kind of crime and, and gone away because he needs to be around for the yeah, show. Yeah, so no. if if Maurice is gone, that's it for General Hospital. Oof. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. Well, at least for me. No. Really? I yeah. I mean, I like him, and I love Laura Wright, and I can honestly stand Carly, like, when she was with Jax, and, hell, I even like Franca better than Sonny again. <laughs> 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 it's just like, and didn't he threaten her life when uh, Olivia accidentally got shot? I mean, sorry, yeah. what kind of a woman goes back after that? Well, she sat down yeah. for him to make him feel more comfortable during the ceremony. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, that was hilarious. I mean, wouldn't she have to do that anyway, Laura? Or writes what half a foot dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Jasmine is currently on my hit list. He said, I uh, hate the Corinthos clan. Sonny is so clumsy. He's oh, so dude, clumsy. I Carly agree. is okay, but annoying when <laughs> with Sonny. Exactly, Morgan is a punk, and Michael is beco has become annoying. Are you kidding me, Jasmine? All right, Jasmine. Mm. I agree. <laughs> you know, that's I, the first time I, I, that just broke my heart. Oh uh, no! Uh oh! Uh oh! This is a, right here, folks. As you're yeah. watching this right now, Lady's heart officially broke. I'm really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are some some of us that really don't like them. We're like, oh, I mean, I've always been a Spencer lover. Really? Well, yeah. I, and like Quartermains. Yeah. yeah. I've loved those two more, and it just yeah. feel like. It's 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 skewed so heavily mobster for the show that I felt like there's you know you've let the quarter mains die on the vine for the mm -hmm. longest time. Yeah. It's like oh, I mean the show originally started as a hospital drama and that doesn't mean it always has to stay that way. But I felt they skewed so hard towards the mobsters for so long that they've lost a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what most of us viewers who've been long term we're like yeah it's called General Hospital, not The Sopranos. Come on, I mean the little bit of mob was always there, but just to be always mob focused, it's just. You know, annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just let let uh, like we were talking last week. Let the cops be competent for once. Yeah, come on. Like yeah. we could bring what was it? Sean McRain, mm -hmm. Michael Easton's new character. Oh mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now write that. <laughs> Michael, uh, just being so, I, I, I'm a little irritated by him. I mean, certainly Tracy can be annoying mm -hmm. at times, but yeah. certainly Michael's doing his best just to really just you know uh, put up some walls between him and the quarter mains right mm -hmm. now. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I thought that after Sonny told him and Morgan not to get involved in the business, I thought that he was going to go back to the old Michael, not talking to Sonny, angry that Sonny said that. But like he didn't. He used to do. But he's still <laughs> claiming being a Corinthos. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's honestly, I mean, I can tell that a lot of it's just to quickly write out Sabrina for maternity leave, maybe, because it seems so quick. Like, you know, sometimes you see that they, they've scrapped a lot to get something that needs to happen right now but the thing is it's so bad guys it was just a complete 180 no little build up no turmoil now it's just like screw the quarter mains and even though i've worked what like the last two three years on this mm -hmm. <laughs> And I uh, yeah. and I'll actually I should uh, put in Sabrina in there as well since yeah. we're talking about her as well and she finally reveals to Tracy that she's pregnant or I'm Tracy deduces it. I'm glad yeah. that happened because no matter how big of shirts they put on her, <laughs> yeah, she's <it's> obvious. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, guys! Like, 
It ha- I, I was saying that yeah. if it didn't happen by the end of this week, they're they're doing too much because. Yeah, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, when they alluded to, you know, the finding of Carlos's body and her little thought about him, I'm like, are we going to have a who's the baby, who, baby daddy story again? It's that's like, what that scene seemed like. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I thought. And I'm like, I don't, I know math, but I'm not sure just, I can work that. That does not seem like it adds up to me. Yeah. That, I don't think there's any way that Carlos could be the father. Well, that's yeah. why they put in that little flashback of them about that's to true. have it because why would, why else would they slip that in there? No, that's true. I mean, it, mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to, but I I think it's good. I think story wise, it makes more sense for it to be right. Michael's. Right, right, and that and that has to make sense. Yeah. Why it took her so long to tell him? I would think because she wasn't sure. Yeah. It, yeah. But it feels like the uh, the idea of him being more drawn over to the Corintho side of the family doesn't seem to be as big an issue for Sabrina. I mean, I guess because you know, she's been involved with Carlos, even though that was sort of a, a breaking point for them. That's why she couldn't really be in a long-term relationship mm-hmm. with them. Yeah, and I think that's why the pregnancy will maybe pull him back towards the quarter veins or, you know, maybe something happening to Sabrina and the baby. So I'm kind of wondering, how's Teresa Castillo's contract? Because, you know, the possibility of Carlos or, you know, you know, Michael going back towards the quarter veins kind of looks grim for Sabrina. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hydro Knight said the baby will bring Michael back to the quarter mains. Yeah, that's what I would think. That's interesting. Yeah, Tracy was all about that. Like, oh, yeah, my, my, my father never got more excited than when somebody was having a baby. It was mm-hmm. a new heir. Right. Even though we squabble about it, who's going to get stocks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, well, well, talking about that side of the family there, we'll talk about uh, Michael's godfather there. I mean, we'll, I, we'll, we'll, Jake, we got uh, we got Jake, Sam, we got Spinelli back. Yeah, and we got Patrick. Spinelli. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, let's move over, Sonny and Carly. We already know I don't like you, but I always thought Jason's <laughs> biggest cheerleaders, friends, whatever you want to call them, were Sam and Spinelli, not you guys. That's who's always deserved Jason, whether he's Quartermain, Morgan, or anything is Sam and Spinelli. So it was cute to see them remember him. Because they're the ones who always really cared. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I'll have to agree with you uh, (laughs) on that one. Um, I actually really love the fact that Spinelli is back. Spinelli became, had become like one of my favorite characters on there. I love what they did with him and his character like this whole time, like having him like the little smarty pants. I love it. I, I feel like it fits him as a person. Um, and I'm just excited to see like what they're going to find out about. Yeah, and I do yeah. like how they've kind of matured his edges. That he still mm-hmm. can keep his quirkiness about him, but right. it's matured by being a father, being in relationships, having friendships. It's kind of shaved out off and made him a little bit more Grounded. socialized. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, that was a character that was interesting to see grow and like become my fan favorite on the show. Because who would have thought a quirky sur- soap character would just like you know become a regular and so liked uh, when he was really kind of odd in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Who knew? But it's because right. Bradford Anderson's just adorable. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And I did like him taking a moment there instead of just jumping right in and being the jackal. They're like, well, I've got yeah. a family. I've got a daughter. I can't be arrested. I can't go to jail. I've got this whole thing going right, on now. Right. Yeah, I love that because he used to, he would just jump right in like, yes, Jason. <laughs> yes, <Stone Cold. laughs> um, And I love that he still has that I think he's Jason type of thing to him. I love that he still has that in the back of his head because at first Sam, you know, she said that, you know, she let, him, she let Jason go. But now yeah. that Spinelli's back. And he's saying that she's starting to have those feelings all over again. And I'm loving that little aspect of it. Yeah, because they were a family. And, you know, yes, her family is great with Patrick, but those feelings do never go away. Right, right. And look at him coming back all sharp with that vest on, rocking that. Look at you, Spinelli. (laughs) Yeah. So now we started the week there with Sam and and Jake finishing up their little intrigue there inside uh, inside, uh, uh, the the Porter Mains man. Or not the Porter Mains man. Cassadine's mansion. <laughs> Boy, I, I, I went blank there. Nicholas is Nicholas is Cassadine. Windermere. I, I really thought there. they were going to get caught. Like I, that was down. I was like, oh my god, it's going to be over. But then if they got caught, then what? Okay. I no. was really disappointed. We didn't see the follow-up scene where Nicholas had to break the news to Spencer that his favorite gargoyle was mm-hmm. had fallen. I know. We needed to see that. We also needed to see <laughs> Sam horrified at the Nicholas sex scene that didn't even happen. I was like, that would just be so funny. I mean, they're cousins, but. And so I, I was also um, a little bit disappointed that Sam didn't tell um, Patrick what happened to her foot, too. Yeah. That was yeah. a secret, too, that I was like, come on, girl. Yeah, she's usually, Patrick is okay with the law sliding. I he mean, knows where she's been. He's not that judgmental when it comes exactly. to that. He's like, I'd prefer if you didn't, but eh, it's the job. Right. So that's why I was surprised. I'm like, usually, Patrick, he might give her a lecture, but 
Yeah. Right. That's why yeah. I didn't understand why she didn't tell him. I yeah. was like, yeah, especially because it wasn't like a life threatening thing. Like mm-hmm. she wasn't yeah. re- like back when she was oh, she was going to rescue Sonny, and and uh, so that the bullets flying all around. Right. Yeah, that's right. life threatening. But breaking yeah. into Windermere, it's like Nicholas is her cousin. He would never really prosecute her or do anything like that. I mean, I would wouldn't think so. So to me, that was like why, Sam. Yeah, so we'll fold in with Nicholas Hayden and Liz into that as well too, right, because right. that uh, that 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 little relationship is getting a little interesting there. I mean, we feel like Hayden has got something else cooking. Yeah, I think that she does have some of her memory back, if not all of it, and she is clearly really? conning, you know, the situation because you see flashes of her just like sitting there thinking, you know, like yeah, I got you. Um, I, th- I think that if they didn't have the episode where she overheard. Uh, Nicholas spewing out what mm-hmm. had happened. I don't think, I don't think she would know much of anything. Yeah, I know. So I'm, it's like I can't really say that she fully has her memory back because she doesn't. Yeah, because I'm thinking that maybe just parts of it. But yeah, you can tell there's clearly some like I don't know. But I think she's clearly you know up to more than she's let on. Not, not just hearing what Nicholas said. Because I'm not sure if you guys remember the yeah. episode where she was like, I'm think I think I'm having a memory or yeah. I wasn't sure if that was legit or if she was playing with him. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, I think she was messing with him because I think that that's what this whole thing is. It's a cat and mouse game of you know I know what you know and mm-hmm. you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's how I interpret it. It may go the other way, but to me, when, you, when you've got Rebecca Budding, who's a great like, you know, con woman, uh, strong character, to have her re- you know, come out on top of it in the end instead of this damsel in distress just makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Well, especially at the end of the week where she gets on the phone at the end and says, I'm in. So, who's she talking yeah. to? So She's got something going on. Right. Now, as much as like she's trying to get her member together, we just see, it feels like watching Liz just start falling apart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, oh, God. That, that conversation yeah. between her and Aiden in, in the hospital, I'm like, dial it back, Liz. Yeah, it's right. like, you're going to get fired. and what You've got like three kids now again. She's <laughs> that afraid. She's that thirsty on, <laughs> on her yeah. memory. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Liz's really, descent into madness is entertaining. <laughs> right. I really want to know who, who was yeah. Hayden talking to on the phone. Just like Paul Hornsby is talking to someone else. Yeah. And now Hayden is on the phone with someone else. Just kind of like... I could see it maybe being Rick with Hayden or you maybe somebody we haven't seen her interact with because Rick's really the only other person she had any contact with. So I could see that, especially with the, you know Elizabeth's situation and he you know, after what happened with Nina, mm-hmm. you know he's looking for a new uh, challenge. That's right. If Rick's not scheming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what else has he got going yeah, on? Yeah, it's like what, do you, what does he have to do? Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, uh yeah. but uh, you know if uh, if James didn't already have uh, a line of the week and I was going to step in for that, it would be <laughs> like, that's in between Hayden and Liz. There was like, if I want your opinion, yeah. I'll ask you for a bed pan. Yeah. Like, oh, all right. I was like, all right. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's no. why I love that scene. I thought they were great. You know, cat fight. Yeah, I, I, I mean, want more. I feel like Liz is becoming her own worst enemy on this, that she is so worried about this being found out that she's going to make it happen right. because she mm-hmm. just keeps attacking all these people and so is so insecure about somebody, knowing, what do you know, are you going to say anything, what's going on? Right, right, right. She, she, I don't know. No. I also thought about, um, I was just thinking about how Jake went over to Nicholas Hmm. That that seems silly to me because yeah. Spinelli right. is going to be cracking in and finding this out. Then why do you need why to go do, you do this? Why do you need to yeah. do that? And that? I was like, come on. That was the only part of the writing that I was like, uh, I'm not too sure about that part. Or why didn't they didn't even try to stop him when he was leaving? Yeah, like they did nothing. They just let him go. And was like, well, yeah, he's gone. So uh, whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you let the you know the quote unquote bad guy let you know what your plans are? Mm-hmm. Like, don't tell him that you you know you know about the DNA test. Because now he's going to try to be like, who is going through my things or who else knows about this? And I don't Or know. he'll do a, you know, pay off Brad or somebody at the hospital to switch it back. You know, you know now that he knows, he hmm. can change anything. Wow. That's what we've finally been waiting to see Brad come on. Yeah, it's finally. Like, I'm, I'm giving you a job for Brad today. <laughs> <laughs> Could we see him come back? <laughs> it's like... What are oh, they saying? Oh, wow. uh, Cheryl said Hayden is trying to get EOQ back from Nick. Uh, for the cues, the quarter mains. That's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Uh, yeah, that would actually be an interesting plot twist because, like, maybe she is a long class quarter main or something because mm-hmm. that would give her, you know, a family connection that we would actually want to see because, you know, we could always use more quarter mains and there's like a buttload of them out there. Right. It's easy to believe that she could be a quarter main. 
Mm. Yeah, especially because you know, the, the potential that they did a couple years ago with the Lost Quarterman Air. Who oh, was yeah. this? Yeah. And that, when that amounted to nothing, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, that would be cool if uh, it, yeah. Hayden was a, a Quarterman Air. Right. So, uh, from uh, speaking of people that aren't making the best moves in their life or kind of being silly, <laughs> like Liz, uh, we've got yeah. Julian, Alexis, and Olivia. Uh, oh, God. Julian's probably much like the dumbest guy around, yeah. isn't he? I know. I'm like, wasn't he like a great mobster opposite Sonny? I mean, he <laughs> yes. was even on here before the Garantos clan. Um, even though it's a new actor and William Devar is great, remember on All My Children? <laughs> Give him something interesting to do instead of just being Alexis's sex toy and just dumb. Like, he has no purpose dude. whatsoever in General mm-hmm. Hospital. Watching, As of right yeah. now. Yeah. Watching him explain to Alexis how Olivia's baby is not, not his, his, I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh, you, do you really? And I feel like Alexis's face is just like, Ugh. you realize how dumb you sound right now, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, how did they do that scene without laughing? Because you know, both of them are like, oh my God, this is just the dumbest thing right. ever. Like, how, do, how are you going to believe that? You're supposed to be this mobster and like a PR kingpin. What does he do again? Um, oh, yeah, 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 he was a a media mogul. Yeah, media yes. mogul. Um, yeah, he has a big, important job, and yet he doesn't get that that's clearly his <laughs> kid. No. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, um, the blanket thing. That was like, whoa, <laughs> Olivia. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Leo. <laughs> no. Oh, man. So then we get Alexis on the hunt. She's you know She finds yeah. sees Olivia and just starts pressing her. I love, I love that she did that. Yeah. I love that she just confronted her and just started to ease her way around, and you just see her sitting there squirming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, answer those questions. Let's see how you, I don't know. Yeah, it's a closed adoption. It's a closed yeah. adoption. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. That's somebody in a church. I was working in a church. It was, you know, it was a blessing. It was a blessing. Wow, mm-hmm. that's what happened. Sure. I was like, oh, come on, Olivia. If you're going to do this, you got to lock it down. Yeah. Don't You don't leave your do pacifier. Your research, yeah. 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 Leave, you leave your pacifier that on the bar? Was so great that she actually picked it up. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the drama going. Yes. And wrap this up quickly, because how long has she had that baby out there? I mean, I know she was on maternity leave, but let's just, like, hurry it up. It's Julian's. We all know, except for him, apparently. <laughs> Although I wonder what what the end game of that storyline yeah. is. I mean, so Julian finds out that it is his. I mean, are they going to then wrestle for custody of this baby? Right. Or I, I don't. Then we're going to have two custody battles happening at the same time. Do I really care about Julian's and Olivia's hmm. more than I care about uh, Carly and, and, and Sunny going up against Ava? Right, right. I guess it's uh, again you know, the Jerome's. I guess they could you know come together on custody battles. <laughs> sure. Yeah, all right. We're doing a two-for-one special down at the courthouse today. <laughs> Caroline, uh, Caroline said Julian's only purpose is to cater to Alexis and demonstrate how smart as she is than him. <laughs> wow. Uh, well. Ooh, that was a tough one. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, Definition of boy toy. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. I'm missing. I'm missing my son. Missing my, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like, all right. Uh, mm, sure. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our other storyline, I we get the screw. Speaking of screws turning on people, there we've got Ava, Paul, and Anna. Oh. Which I feel like Anna is just getting the screws turned to her now. I just love mm-hmm. what Paul is just working all this stuff with Carlos's body. Yeah, that was honestly awesome because he was just sitting there, and I loved how what was it he said at the end about? Yeah, um, it was so um, just two weeks ago. Isn't that odd? And then he's just like looking at her, like I know you did it. And it was just so awesome. Right. I was like, oh, he and she knows. He makes me. He yeah. makes me feel uncomfortable. And yeah. he's not even talking to me. And I'm like, oh my god, I love him. I know it's so fun to watch. Um, because Anna's got to be losing her yeah. mind knowing that. Like, all right, well, clearly. I mean, the wallet's there. I thought I had the wallet, and now yeah. it's being found here with this. What's going on? Didn't the Hornsby have the wallet? Or, uh, yeah, he got he got yeah. it from uh, uh, Sloan. Sloan, yeah. So yeah. how did the wallet him. end back in the dead person's pocket? I'm guessing that Sloan may, this may not even really be Carlos's body. It can't be. And that's the thing, is he oh, may be setting just... this all up to, you know, just watch Anna unravel, because it's fun. Smart. Yeah. Yeah, so that's and so what you've got that. I mean, you've got the, the, then Paul and, and Ava as Paul wants to keep accelerating yeah. his plan. He, he took a little moment though, as Ava said, like, well, I'm in the middle of a custody battle. Yeah. I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, I, we've got that, Ava. You've already said that a few times. Yeah, <laughs> right. you got it. You yeah. care about your head. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> 
Yeah. And then you've got uh, Anna going out to Patrick, wanting to get some help, getting some uh, some medication to help her sleep. Yeah, honestly, I, I liked that scene because it really did establish again that, you know, she's like a mother to Patrick and there's that close relationship. But to have her just flat out, you know, lie to him was like, oh, this is going to mm -hmm. really hurt on down the line. Cause I'm not going to lie. Like, the first thing I thought when she asked for those pills, I was like, is she going to OD? <laughs> like, is she just doesn't want to do with this? Is that what she's going to do? Take her own self out? I can't imagine she'd do that. No, not, not Anna. Yeah. That was the first thing that I thought. You know, why would you just go ask him for sleeping pills? I don't know. <laughs> well, Seems a little weird to me. Her thoughts of Carlos and killing him are keeping her awake at night, yeah. so she needs help <laughs> sleeping. Well, uh, speaking of people doing uh, with dealing with issues with substances, yeah. we had uh, Kiki back earlier <laughs> where they get back after she gets out of prison, they're out of jail mm -hmm. with uh, Nina and Franco. They go back to the, uh, the apartment there, and then she's looking around she's hidden stashes of bottles in the bookshelves I'm like why are you hiding bottles uh. of alcohol in your own place yeah right. it's like you live there by yourself <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh Kiki. I better hide these just in case just in case they like clear it all out <laughs> oh, even though like, they moved in what a day ago so I don't know if they're, are they just like forcing her down the road of just turning her into an alcoholic? Obviously. I think they're probably trying to give her something to make her sympathetic. And, you know, usually <laughs> substance abuse can, you know, especially after a loss, they're like, okay, this is easy to write. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we, we haven't had a storyline like that in a while. I mean, not since like Luke's intervention like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that might be where they're going because it's such a big issue in this country. So, eh. I can see it be like, oh, Kiki's an alcoholic. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, that'd no. be fantastic. <laughs> wow. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I feel like those are our big major storylines here. Uh, you know, we've got you know a few minor ones, just like you know with, with Tracy and Sabrina, just like they're just. I, I, I still like the their little little friendship burgeoning there, and even though they had that little small scene about talking about the pregnancy and stuff. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I do worry about Tracy though. Uh, this way, I feel like she's just being sort of marginalized again, and I, I can't yeah. stand it when Tracy's marginalized. Yeah, because Tracy is one of the long-running characters that has always been entertaining. I mean, she doesn't need Luke. She's her own person, guys. Like, mm -hmm. give Tracy something to do. Have her help fight with Michael or Jake or whoever to get ELQ back. Because, you know, all these little scenes with Sabrina are great, but they're just. You know, it's not Tracy. Well, she definitely tried, yeah. but it was a fail. So it's like, where else do they put her now? Yeah. <sighs> well, yeah, I, I feel like there's. She is such a great character, and she's. I mean, if you watch back when back when the character of Paul was back on the show originally, I mean, she mm -hmm. was such a spitfire and a hellion, and just mm -hmm. when he wanted to get together with Jenny, and she was just doing everything, just being so <laughs> so smart and so manipulative. And now I just feel like it's just you know, she's just kind of pushed on the shot side. Yeah, I was so glad when they brought Joe Jr. on years ago, and he had that romance with Tracy. It was like, yes, I mean, I loved her and Luke, but she always just felt like when that would end for a little while, there was no Tracy. So to have that, I was like, yes, Tracy in a romance, an interesting story. And then the, it was short-lived. It's like, could they maybe bring on a love interest for Tracy? Because I don't see it with her and Paul. I think they're more like friendly uh, co-parents than right. he is with Ava and Anna. So I don't see it there with Paul, but they could easily bring back, you know, an ex-husband or, you know, Tracy's always loved mobsters. How about, you know, just try her with Julian? <laughs> Maybe, maybe make him her boy toy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Johnny Sicari yeah. gets out of prison and he's like, oh, maybe oh, yeah. Sugar Mama is what I need. Tracy, exactly. how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn said that um, uh, she wants Tracy to discover who Paul really is. I think mm. that would be interesting, too, if Tracy was the first part of person to find out what Paul is doing. I thought that's what yeah. they were going, it was that last week or so, where she overheard part of his conversation. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, are they going to start pulling that already? That would be cool. Yeah, because I could see Tracy just going along with it, like right. Skylar style from Breaking mm -hmm. Bad. Like, all right, what what do you want me to do? I could definitely see that too. Although, you, do you think she could? I mean, do, especially because she seems to be holding her father's memory and legacy in such high esteem. Like, would, do you think she could just let something that could possibly jeopardize a quarter main? I you know. I mean, she did sell her shares to Jerry Jacks to save <laughs> Luke. So, like, <laughs> this can't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wow. so uh, folks, well, we're going to get into the other segments of our shows. Lots of cool stuff happening this week. We've got our, all our special segments here. Uh, I guess we'll start things off with get them to the ER stat. Yes. Mm. 
So uh, that's my little segment here. My little segment there. Give him, that's mine. Yeah, that's mine. That's Frank's little segment there. Get him the air step. Mine is both a uh, something about a character, uh, but also I guess it's uh, about uh, predictions and, and upcoming uh, buzz about the show. Is uh, John Lidstrom's coming back as Kevin Collins? Yay! Which I'm excited yeah. about, but. I'm. I hated the way his character was last time he was on the show. I felt it was such a waste of that character and that actor the last time. So, him coming back to the show, I want them to do something a lot better with him this time around. I agree because I loved him. I grew up uh, loving Kevin and Lucy and back, you know, when they were with Scotty and all that. Um, that was just such a great time in the show to see John Lindstrom come back and they gave him what nothing. He was just a puppy dog while Lucy is like cheating on him. It's like what. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, Kevin, I mean, he he killed people for Christ's sakes. He's an interesting character. Absolutely. Like, come on. And now that you have so many characters, you've got Anna, you've got mm. Franco, you've got Nina, and possibly Kiki, they, uh, and Morgan with bipolar disorder. I mean, mm. all these characters that need uh, yeah, therapy. Yeah, they need a psycho. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there's so much that you could do with him. He can be involved with so many characters. There's a lot that he could be involved in. And I just hope they do more of that. And I honestly, I don't need to see him trying to woo back Lucy. Or Scott, just mm, yeah. a little, let him let him be on his own feet for a little while, and then if you want to revisit that, okay. Yeah, because so. I mean, you got Kiki and Morgan right now. You know, easily bring in a doctor, a therapist, and you know, Franco and Nina, like you said, uh, just give him something to do. I mean, maybe even I could see he, him, him, uh, Roger Howard and John Lindstrom would be great opposite one another. I mean, uh-huh. they kind of toyed with it before. So yeah, that's really what I'm looking forward to. Maybe bring Franco back to the hospital and have them. Pal around with Patrick, whatever. <laughs> and then we can get our uh, thing of the floating rib of uh, him and Mac just broing out. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're playing some pool, broing out. That's what we do, man. <laughs> we need bro- more bro scenes. <laughs> 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 All right, so then uh, we're going to move on to Love in the Afternoon Love with in the Lady. Afternoon. Mm. Well, Love in the Afternoon for me this week. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Lucretia, but <laughs> you're going to be a little bit upset. Oh, but I yeah. feel like the only love that was going on was the wedding that took place between Sonny and Carly. I thought for a split second that it was going to get interrupted again, um, mm-hmm. you know, when uh, Michael's phone rang. Oh, yeah. Um, but I was happy that they actually arranged something, you know what I mean? Like, Sonny actually put something together for them in the hospital, not just, oh, he's going to be laying on his bed. I like that they actually had a ceremony. Bobby, I like that they had almost everyone there that they were close to. So I, actually, I absolutely love that this week. You, but I also wonder what those characters like. If you, yeah, you're Bobby, and you're seeing this thing happen for the fifth time, yeah. you're like, hey. why, are we, why are we here, guys? What's going on? Yeah, My I so love. wish Bobby and Lucas had said something, because I liked that they were there. That was really the only thing I liked. And then Christina, and it's like, well, we have Christina back. Could you give her something to do? Like, she just pops up like, oh, hey, Dad. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, couldn't these characters say, like, hey, why are we here? <laughs> and we've got the new Jocelyn. Yeah. Uh, okay. This week, so I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, if they're going to recast Jocelyn, yeah. I'm hoping they have something in store for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. Um, I see that Jasmine said his love in the afternoon um, is still Sam and Jason, mm-hmm. but there is no Jason <laughs> yet, so no, it's no. Sam and Jake. <laughs> oh. Now, Lady, uh, you're getting married. Would you get married in the hospital or the, the church of a hospital? Um, no. No. <laughs> no. No matter no matter how sick your man was, it's like get up, we're going we're doing this right. I, I think that I wouldn't, but I love the fact that they still push through it because at the end of the day they don't know when Sonny's gonna be able to get up and walk again. So they push through that little obstacle. <laughs> Are you seriously <laughs> laughing? <laughs> Yes, of I, course. I, I, I still love. Walking. I mean, I can't say, circle, but at, we all know that they're doing it for the sake of Avery. So who knows? Maybe I would have if it's a child involved. I don't know. I'm curious what the what what it's gonna be like. Is Sunny just gonna have to be at the hospital for a while doing rehab, and then it's just Carly just in the in the court? Yeah, because you mm-hmm. know they will drag that out with Sunny in the wheelchair, because that's just what they love to do. It's like, oh, poor Sunny. Oh. And then it's gonna be that really dramatic moment where yeah. you don't think is Sunny gonna he's getting out of oh, the chair. Oh, those physical <laughs> therapy scenes are just gonna be like, <laughs> God, I just can't wait. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we're going to go over to Lucretia there with, for our winner, loser of the week. Well, um, you know, it was actually pretty hard to pick uh, this week on the winner, and that's usually not the case. But I have to say, uh, I'm going to go with Nina on the fact that, you know, I think she really brought um, more people over to her side this week, you know, with her little speech about Silas, and it kind of really 
gave the character some depth and understanding that wasn't there. And then, I mean, how can we not pick Kiki for the loser <laughs> of the week? I'm sorry. That girl's life is just rock bottom. And, you know, hopefully, I think once she's hit rock bottom, we might actually start to like the character and feel bad for her and just see what she does. I mean, if she wants to be the town drunk, I, it's certainly better than the town hump. Oh! <laughs> well, wait, why, 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 why her yeah. well, she's been with the, both Corinthian boys. Yeah. And, <laughs> and just uh, pass back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, what I also like with uh, Nina being dialed back, yeah. I also feel like seeing Franco dialed back a little bit, too, so it's like him having that relationship with Kiki, I feel like, humanizes him, so it doesn't seem like he's such a cuckoo banana guy the whole yeah. time. Yeah, because he's more, like, fatherly, and you're actually like, oh, he's really taking charge, not goofing around uh, with her situation, because he's like, yeah, this is serious, and you're actually seeing, you know, to like the character, he's no longer just camp. You know, it's kind of like with Spinelli, like, forever, they had him just be goofy, and then they started to give him stuff a heart, you know? Stuff to really work with versus just, like, always being the joke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do like that he did not, uh, uh, he re-rolled with them when, when Kiki was like, well, you're just hanging out with this lady, you know, she's rich, you're just living off of her. And I'm like, mm. yeah, I, I am, yeah. I am. Uh-huh. that's what I'm doing, I know. <laughs> But I'd like to see if he's going to get back into the artwork at all. I mean, is that going to happen again? Yeah, like I said, you know, if they bring John Lindstrom back, I would love to see Franco go back to work at the hospital, you know, and really pal around, you know, Kevin, because I just think those would be some great scenes. And Dr. O, I mean, she loves him, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see that show here says that uh, Liz is the loser of the week. Mm-hmm. And I kind of have to agree with her a little bit because I feel like Elizabeth lost a lot of her power when confronting Aiden. So I, I, I really would consider it a loser of the week, too. Yeah, it's always hard not to pick Elizabeth every week. <laughs> so, like, I try to bury it up. Well, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that week of November 6th. I mean, yeah. we pretty much, we already know, folks, Liz is the loser, loser. that week. Loser. We, we, yeah. we sure. she's, uh, she's already being, being set up for that <laughs> one. Yeah, it's like, I totally agree. Liz is a loser every week, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I, at the... Uh, Oh, I was going to say one thing with the uh, as we're talking about there or, or, or with Nina and uh, Franco. It's yeah. uh, oh, I feel like with Franco, I feel like once Jason's being Jake is revealed as Jason, that hopefully that does something to Franco because I know they had such a strong connection, even though they're not related now. He's had the tumor removed, but I'm hoping that at least sparks something. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I don't know. Yeah, I think that they really intentionally have not brought him up because they're trying to forget like that whole character before Roger Howard came on as Franco. And I think that they've done it intentionally, but to me, to not mention it just almost makes it worse. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, he was obsessed with Jason for what, like 30, 40 years? I don't know, how old is he? <laughs> yeah. They've changed it over and over. Mm-hmm. No, and, and I just, again, we've talked about this before, but I felt that was just the biggest mistake they did with that character is remove him from the quarter main orbit. Because right. I felt like there was just so much to do, especially now with Jason coming back. Yeah, I mean, and maybe that would give Tracy something to do to spar with Franco. And, you know, Franco could help with the ELQ. Just give him something. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. Now we're on to the part news and gossip. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talking about some, yeah, mm-hmm. no yeah. sound effects today. No sound effects for that. Yeah, that's all right. We got some news and gossip coming your way here. Didn't you want to play James's quote of the week? Oh, that's yeah. you know what? Forgot uh, Daddy's away, and we forgot <laughs> to play his favorite game. Look at yeah. that, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, James Lott Jr. with quote of the week. <laughs> Oh my God, it's me, James Lott Jr. I am so sad, you guys, that I cannot be there today in person. My other job got in the way, so I am in Chicago in a hotel room. But I could not not be there with you guys and not give you my quote of the week. So my quote of the week is mine and a big fan of the show, our Melvin fan. We both came up with this one. We like it. And it's Lulu and Nicholas brother and sister. Make sure I look over and read this correctly. Lulu, I'm pretty sure you're going straight to hell. Nicholas, cast lines have their own private wing there. I thought it was kind of fun and funny uh, between the two of them. Especially with Nicholas turning to the dark side. It's crazy. But you guys, I'll be back next week. Have a great show and I'll see you next time. Look at that. He's right in the room with us. (laughs) Look at that. That's, That's right. Sweet. James will be back next week. And speaking of other people that will be coming into the Afterbus studio, we've got on November 8th, we're going to have Dylan Quartermain himself, Robert Palmer Watkins, is going to be here in the studio. Super excited. Oh, yeah. There That'll you- be fun. 
<laughs> the crew is very excited by this. Look at her go. <laughs> oh, no. We need something to do, guys. You know. <laughs> That's right. So make sure you get together all your Dylan Quarterman questions, everything you ever wanted to know about Robert, Dylan, the working on General Hospital, all those stuff. November 8th, he's going to be right in here. He's going to be answering all your questions, all our questions. Right. And I'll be sure to stay tuned in the chat room so you guys can, I guess I can ask some questions for him. Yeah, you know, get absolutely. you guys involved. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, other news happening is Allison Sweeney just directed an episode of, uh, of General Hospital. So our Days of Our Lives star, former Days of Our Lives star, is now directing the GH show. So it's like James's two worlds are colliding right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, maybe if she's directing, could Wally Kurth come up back over too? I mean... Oh well, we, we're talking we about gossip. Yeah. We, we saw that little uh, the, the yeah. little flash for Monday's episode, and I was like, "Hot dog, we got Ned in there. We got <laughs> Ned in there. I'll take that." Oh, I but, love Eddie Main. <laughs> uh, I mean, I feel like that storyline needs to have Ned pop in at some point, just to at least give it some kind of resolution between the two of them, because it's mm-hmm. feel like that's just just floating out there. Yeah, like she just keeps going back and forth between Benson Hurst and, uh, you know, Port Charles just seems a little odd. Like, you know, how is that relationship really working? <laughs> but when, yeah. Julian, when Julian tells Alexis, like, well, yeah. you know, that's how things are done there. Like, yeah. how do you know that, Julian? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julian. <laughs> you just speak it. I mean, I guess I should start picking you as the loser of the week. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, he's he'd be ranking up there with Liz right now. Yeah. It's just I yeah I, I I don't know what his his plan is right now because now that they've kind of written him off from the mob I feel like they've made that decision he's not involved with the it's mob not, at all right yeah. now yeah so now what does his character do other than well, Alexis, Chris yeah. Saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's, that's what I kept on thinking about. Uh, just you was talking last week about how no. dumb that uh, Julian was. I just think yeah. of the <laughs> I was watching that whole explanation scene happening there. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, I think that's going to be about. Yeah. They didn't do it for us. Look at this. Ooh. James wasn't here. We we made it we through, guys. Did. We, we, we got made through it through. It. Yes. We still miss you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, uh, one last thing we do is predictions. We got some predictions yeah. coming up here. So, and now your After Buzz TV mm. predictions. Yeah, look at that. We're gonna leave you with our what our thoughts are for what's coming up. I don't know. Leading, you got a prediction no. coming up I'm, here. I'm, I'm trying to uh, cook it up really quick. Let's <laughs> see. Mm. Mm. All right. Oh, Lucretia. I know for me, I mean, I'm just hoping that we get some resolution here and how the Jake reveal is going to come out. Like, I mean, obviously everyone's going to hate Liz and Nicholas and just like, what are they going to do? I think they're going to be stuck on Castanine Island, you know, while everybody's out there with their forks and, uh, you know, fire. What do you guys think? Do you feel like it... Lynch mob. Does it... Do you, if you were thinking, if you're going to be writing yeah. that scene, you're in the writer's room right now. You're mm-hmm. talking about November 6th. That's what's happening. How are we going to do this reveal? Do you want the reveal happening at the actual wedding ceremony? Do you want it something that's going to prevent the wedding ceremony from even happening? It's happening someplace off? Else, I would like rather Island? the wedding yeah. ceremony not even take place. Don't even do it like that. I think that's so typical. Someone may yeah. bust into the room. Oh, this is what it is. Yeah. No, I, I don't like that idea. I, I kind of want it to be Liz is left at the altar. I mean, just to see that after all her buildup would just be the ultimate, like, burn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like it's got to be something that's yeah. going to put Liz and Nicholas in front and center of everybody else around there just to see that exposure happen. Mm-hmm. Although I, I, if it was a wedding, I don't know, I mean, are Liz and Jake that popular that there's going to be that many people in attendance for that wedding? So I don't know <laughs> if that, like, that's like the biggest place to do that reveal. Yeah. Oh, wow. I see Amanda said, I want little Jake to spill it. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I like that I too. I love it. Because they did show him looking with those demon right. seed eyes and I was like, yeah, Yes, this is gonna be good. That's right. So he just got done killing an animal, and yeah. then he's gonna run down. Say, guess what? Guess yeah, you, what? You really, Jason? Right. Yeah. Uh, we have another prediction here from Jasm uh, saying, "I'm predicting Spinelli uh, will be the one to discover the truth about Jason. Little Jake and Hayden will both play a part in Nick and Liz being exposed." I could see all those characters kind of mm-hmm. coming in and. Yeah, I feel like you can't bring Spinelli back and have him working around solving the secret and not have him not play some yeah. part in there. Right. 
And I, I was also wondering, will Morgan get caught up in this whole Carlos, you know, when Michael called Morgan after he left the police station? I was wondering, what was that about? Yeah, I think Michael's going to suspect Morgan killed Carlos right, since they're saying it was like right after it's it was revealed he shot Sonny. So I think Michael's first thought is Morgan did it. Right, and so Morgan that's going to be a break. He doesn't, yeah. all, like to me, I don't feel like he knows how to put a cap on his emotions. So they <laughs> might think or pin it on him. I don't know. That's why I'm looking forward to having Kevin Collins back. Is just yeah. to see him start and seeing Morgan start addressing some of these issues because I feel like he's been diagnosed, but he's just been so. There's always been, I guess, an excuse for him not to pursue any sort of treatment with that. Yeah, because it's he's basically been diagnosed by his parents, who I mean, they're no doctors. I mean, we, re, <laughs> we really need to see like Morgan actually go to the doctor. I mean, go to Shady Brook, something to really believe this and you know really start to explain his behavior. Maybe talk about some of his issues, like you know, with Michael and Kiki and all that, because he's got a lot of problems. <laughs> Cheryl. Any other predictions from the, uh, the chat room there? <laughs> I just see that Cheryl said little Jake has been Cassidyneized. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. You know, they do have their own special place in hell. <laughs> that was funny. I like that. And I feel like, well, we still have Laura floating around too as well, and she's pretty mm. much just, without ever actually saying the words, has just led everybody up yeah. right to it in every conversation she's had. I don't know if she's going to play and a part in it. And it went right over their head. So yeah, it's like, like, Laura, sorry, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Right. You got Jake, uh, little Jake and big Jake. You're telling them without, like, telling them. It's like, God, beat you guys over the head. You got problems. You're Jason. Mm -hmm. right, now, you bring in, you've got Laura back no. on the canvas. She seems like she's going to be around for a while. I mean, even though it's great to see her without Luke doing her own thing, I mean, there's you still have such an iconic character. You need to probably get her in a relationship with somebody. Is there anybody currently on the canvas that you could see them maybe steering her towards for a potential relationship? I would have said Paul, but he's already, like, got Tracy. You know, he hit that. And then he's got Anna and Ava, you know, this struggle. I mean, is Paul just going to, you know, be the Sonny of his uh, <laughs> age group there? Because, yeah, like, you know, just like Sonny, he could easily bang all these women on the show and uh, be interesting. Cause I feel like they can't go back with Scotty. I mean, that, yeah. that ship's kind of coming south. I mean, they, they got him married, and finally, and then they just you know, they ended up breaking up after that. So I feel like you can't put those two back together. But without that, I don't know if there's anybody else on the canvas that I could see her hooking right. up with. No, yeah, I mean... Rick Lansing. <laughs> yeah, that might be interesting. <laughs> I just can't see how that relationship yeah. would come together. Yeah, it's like, how, how would that work? Yeah, I could see Paul, but, yeah, because they could have said he was the guy she had a relationship with back in... Uh, you know, France or... You know. Yeah, that's true. Because I was like, oh, with him coming in, they could have gone that direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they didn't... Yeah. yeah, they haven't chosen to do that. So I don't know what they're... I don't know what their grand plan is for Laura. Now that they've had her kind of come back and say what she's known to everybody, hey, what's maybe, going on for you? Maybe really, Kevin really, Collins. Right, right, right. <laughs> really, really quick. I know that we're, like, on a time constraint, but I see mm -hmm. that Cheryl said, why is Laura not telling the secret? Why bring her back if they're just going to, like, ruin her to it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why no. bring her back if she's not going to tell the secret? Yeah, I, you know, I, that's a tough thing. I don't know if, like, if, if if I was in that in those shoes, would you say it? I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's after she found out that they're all like in a happy place individually. Like, I think that's why she felt like she couldn't say anything because she went over there to say to Sam about Jason, and then it's like, oh, she's engaged with Patrick. They have a little family. I don't know. I mean, I think that kind of took her aback because she literally had every intention of you know spilling it, and then it's like, oh. and then they don't. So it's yeah. now like she's just standing in a corner now, which is why I kind of agree with with Cheryl. Yeah. yeah, like she came to do a job, and then she found out everyone's happy, and now she's just sitting in the chair in a corner, just doing what waiting till I don't know because I feel like it's yeah. so different between uh, when Robin came back and you had Patrick and, and Sabrina getting married I thought like that relationship I could really see like a reason for Patrick to be in, in love with Sabrina mm -hmm. and do that but now with with Patrick and Sam and Jason coming back I just I never buy that Patrick and Sam that there would be a reason that Sam could even possibly even consider staying with Patrick rather than Jason. I yeah. think with Emma because I think after that scene with Emma really worried about uh, Sam leaving like you know her mother did and Sabrina did. I think that sort of really solidified that reason for Sam because even though she loves Patrick, it's not the same with Jason. But with kids involved, yeah, it's different. Do, but you could mm. well, yeah. But could yeah, you see hers yeah. like saying like, "All right, I'm going to stick with Patrick. I'm sorry, Jason. I know you've been. I thought yeah. you've been dead for three years, and we do have a son together, and you also have a son with Elizabeth. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah, that came back from the dead. Mm -hmm. But I could see her being. Well, she's probably going to be mad that he didn't figure it out. I mean, because I think that that's going to be part of it is a resentment that after all this time he didn't remember. He, 
Really? Yeah. Oh, and yeah, you, I, you I need to put that. it back mm-hmm. on him? Well, uh, I could see that her being a little upset and hurt that he didn't remember her. Like, you could see it. Yeah, how, like, how dare you get run over <laughs> by yeah. a car and your and, face yeah, re- altered and altered not remember now. me? <laughs> like, you know, they do shit. that on soaps all the time. It's like, right. oh, I can't believe you didn't know it was me and you didn't... Yeah, I see it. Man, I, Lucretia, you got to you mm. set the bar high for excuses. That's the only one she's going to accept from somebody. That, that's something. Like, you got the baby, and then you've got, you know, hey, you didn't remember me. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good enough no. excuse. you gotta go, You got to do better than getting run yeah. over by a car and get your face changed. <laughs> mm. All right, folks. We are, uh, we're wrapping it up here on this uh, GH report, folks. So where can we find everybody here? You can find me on Twitter at Ladeen underscore Harvey. And you can find me on Twitter at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N. And you can find me at Happy Go Jackie, that's J-A-C-K-I-E. And you can see me at I.O. West this Tuesday night playing with my improv team, Max, at 9.30 over at I.O. West. Tickets are only 5 bucks. So make sure you check us out on Facebook, G-A- the GH Report on Facebook. Uh, follow us on our hashtag, ABTV yes. GH Report, or yeah. hashtag GH Report. And rate and comment on us on YouTube and iTunes, you know, so we can uh, see how much of you guys really enjoy everything we're doing here. And we're really excited about our Sunday soap block that we're doing here on After Buzz TV with Dish and Days and GH Report. We're like two great tastes that taste even better together. We're like the chocolate <laughs> and peanut butter yeah. of daytime uh, dishing right there. That's what we're all about here. <laughs> all right, folks. We'll see you next week here with James Lott Jr. Yes. back in the command chair. See you next week. (laughs) From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 